Now let's work with a combination circuit. Now a combination circuit has resistors that are series and parallel in the same circuit. And the trick with these circuits is to combine those resistors that are either series or parallel, redraw them in another circuit, show their combined values or equivalent values and then redraw it again till you get the circuit broke down to the total resistance. Now what I've done, your section 2-6 has combination circuits in it. I have gone to assignment sheet number 1, number 8, and I've drawn it on the board. Now they have some questions on this particular circuit. I want to show you also, along with answering those questions, I want to show you how we would redraw this circuit to find our total resistance. Okay, now you'll see that we have resistor 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and that's in combination. Now they have a question here at what point does the current first divide? And you'll see my full load current would be up to the point that it first divides. And that would be right at point A. You see? Then they ask, at what point does current next divide? Then you would see that would be at B. And then, of course, it would all come back for full line current right at C. Now... If I was to indicate values of resistance on this particular circuit and solve that circuit, what I would have to do is to find out well, what my total resistance is. Then if I know total voltage or total current, then you see, then, that, uh, then I can find my, uh, my other parameters. Okay, now... What we want to do is join those resistors that are either series or parallel only. Now you'll see I can't join these two because resistor number three is in parallel with a combination of three resistors. But if you'll look at four and five, they're parallel only and they can be joined together. Now when I redraw the circuit, I'll show the equivalent resistance. And it would look like this. That would be R number one. Then we have R two. Then I'll show the equivalent resistance of four and five. And then R three over here like this. Okay. Now this is R one. R two. R three. This is R E Q or equivalent resistance of R4 and R5. You see, they're joined together. Now, when I join those two together, I'll use what we call the, the parallel or the unequal branch method, whatever the case might be, but I would, I would parallel them together. I would use the parallel method of joining them together. If they were both 10s, for example, use the equal branch method, I know that that equivalent resistance of this resistor would be 5. Now, what I'll do is redraw that circuit again now and join those resistors that are series or parallel only. Now you'll see that I can join those two together because they're series only. When I redraw that, it'll look like this. Then I'll have R1, R3, equivalent resistance again. This time it's an equivalent resistance of, of R4, R5, and R2. I won't indicate those on here, but you'll see that'll be used. Now, now for me to find the equivalent resistance there, I would have to come back here and I would have to add, because I know resistors in series are additive, I would have to add whatever I had here along with R2 and then indicate that value over here. Now you see I have to take those resistors that are parallel only and I would be joining together 
equivalent resistance in R3, and it would look like this. Then I would have R1, then I would have REQ. Now I'm coming back. This was step one, two, three, four. Now for my total resistance, I would draw it out and it would look like this. R sub T, now we've got. In other words, they're in series, I would add them together and that'd be my total resistance. Now, the trick in working combination circuits is to redraw it, come all the way down to where I have the total resistance. And then let's say my total resistance is uh, of a certain value, I have total voltage, that means then I could find total current. I would put my total current in here. I would have my total voltage given. I'd know my total current. Now, what I found out here was what my total current was. If I would go back here, my total current there is going to be the same. You see, as what my total resistance and voltage is. And then I would be able to find now, because I know two parameters for each of those two resistors, I would know the resistance and the current now. That means I could find the voltage drop across each of those resistors. Okay. Now, this resistance here represents those two in parallel. Remember, in parallel, your voltage drop is the same. That means this voltage drop there would be the same across both of those resistors then I could find the current flow then through each of those resistors. Now, the current flow through this branch represents those two in series. The current flow then would give me the value of voltage drop across each of those. And then, of course, this resistance right here represents both of these in parallel. That voltage drop means the voltage drop across both of four and five then I could find the current flow through each of those. So what happens is you, you, you go all the way down, find your total resistance, bring, it back, bring back with you either the voltage or the current, depending on what the situation is, and then keep bringing it back until you get all the way back to where you're down to the actual resistance itself. In other words, when I get to a point where I have the actual resistance, then I've got all my parameters for that resistance. But when I've got an equivalent resistance, I'm going to have to back up again, back towards the first drawing again, and then find all the variables you see that I need. Okay, now let's take this circuit, combination circuit, work it out, and then we'll move on in the program. Now, as you'll see, we have a combination circuit here. And the first step we have to go through is to join those resistors that are either series or parallel only. And you'll see we have resistors 3, 4, and 5 in series. So if I join those together, it'll look like this. Okay, now this resistor we haven't changed, so this is 10 ohm resistor, this is a 30 ohm resistor, and over here we're joining together three resistors that are in series for 30 ohms. Okay, now you'll see here we have two resistors that are parallel, we would join those together on the next step. And, of course, we would use the parallel method. In this case, they're equal resistances. We would take the value of the resistance divided by the number of them. This would be an equivalent resistance. It would be 15 ohms. Take 30 divided by 2, we'd have 15 ohms. Over here, we have 10 ohms. Now, we have 2 in series. We'll back up over here again, and we will have our total resistance now. And, of course, in series, we would add them together. We would have 25 
ohms for a total. Now, according to our sheet, we have a total voltage of 25 volts. Makes it easier for us. All of these, you see, we would have 25 volts. Back here, you see what we would do. We know total voltage. We know total resistance. That means I could find the current flow through that. I would, uh, using Ohm's law, I is equal to E divided by R. I would have 25 divided by 25 or one amp in that circuit. That means if I would come back here to this point then, that I would have also one amp. At this point, I have two parameters now for each one of these resistors. This one represents itself. This is an equivalent resistance of those two. That means then that I know that my voltage is equal to my current times or my resistance. I would have 1 times 15 in this case. That means that I would have a 15 volt drop right here at this point. And of course over here you see at this resistor here I'm going to have a 10 volt drop. Because my current's the same in series multiply my current times my resistance I'll have a 10 volt drop here. 15 volt drop over here for a total of 25. Each circuit will work out and be be complete in itself. Okay. Now, this 15 volt drop that I found here, I'll bring back here. Now, this resistor represents two in parallel. So, this particular uh, parallel, these two, well, there's actually two branches here. I would actually have across each of those a 15 volt drop, you see. Because this resistor represents both of those in parallel. And we know in a parallel circuit voltage drop is the same. Now here you see what I would do now is take my resistance now. Here, I would be, uh, I would be in this case I'd look for my current. I'd take my voltage divided by my resistance. I would have 0.5 amps here and 0.5 amps over here on this branch. Now I'll go back from here over to this. Now this this branch right here, this resistor right here represents this branch here. And I've got three resistors, each with 0.5 amps for a parameter, you see. In other words, my current through this branch, if I'd put an ammeter, would be a half of an amp, you see. That would in turn then give me the voltage drop on each of those resistors. In other words, I'd have 7.5 volt drop here, I would have a 5 volt drop here, and I'd have a 2.5 volt drop here for a total of 15 volts, you see. So this is a procedure you want to do. Just keep bringing all this information back till you get right on back to where the resistors represent themselves. Now way back here we found out everything we needed to know about that particular resistor. But then wherever we had an equivalent resistance we brought information back so that we could find out what the total would be. Try it. If you go through and draw them accurately you should have no problem with your combination circuits.